Hi. Welcome to Residential Realty. How can I help you? We found this house on the internet and we'd like to have someone show it to us. Okay, sure. Let me see if Jack Ingram is available. Um, when would be a good time for you to see it? Uh, we're pretty open, but we'd like to see it as soon as possible. Okay, sure. Hi, Jack. I have some folks here interested in the property on Preston. Do you have a minute now? Okay, great. Okay, you will be here shortly. Fantastic, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks. Hi, I'm Jack Ingram. Hi. Hope you haven't been waiting long. <laughs> no, not at all, we just got here. Yeah, thanks. I'm Devin Harrison, and this is my wife, Martha. We actually want to talk to you about the property over on 2100 Preston uh, by Main Street. Oh, great. Hey, Kim, can you call Mr. Sherman and set up an appointment for today for the Harrisons? Yeah, sure. And while she's doing that, why don't we step back in the conference room and see how we can be of service, okay? All right. So have you ever bought or sold real property in Idaho before? No, we just moved here from Texas. Are you currently working with any other real estate people? No. No, we're new in town. We're relocating for business reasons. Great. Uh, what was it about this property that caught your attention? We really like this property just because it's close to my new office. Okay, so sounds like location is important to you. I will keep that in mind. Before we see the house, I need to go over a couple of things with you. State law requires me to give you this brochure and explaining your options for representation. I'm also required to get a receipt from this brochure. Um, we really don't want to sign anything or be obligated in any way. We really just wanted to view the property. It looks like Jack and the Harrisons are at a crossroads. This is a good thing because it gives Jack an opportunity to show the state of Idaho's concern for real estate consumers. Jack also has the opportunity to demonstrate a little professional polish and integrity. Jack knows his obligations are twofold at this point. He must give the Harrisons the informational brochure and retain a receipt from them. Let's see how Jack handles this. Um, we really don't want to sign anything or be obligated in any way. We really just wanted to view the property. It's not a contract. Idaho's agency law is all about choices. This brochure is produced by the Idaho Real Estate Commission to give you information about all the choices you have to be represented in a real estate transaction. It doesn't create any obligation upon either of us. The receipt is so I can prove to the state that I gave you the brochure. I'm required to provide it at the first substantial business contact. Looking at a house is pretty substantial. Well, that sounds simple enough. Now this tear-off portion is my receipt. I'll just keep this one and give you a pretty one. This meeting could also occur with a seller. If Jack were making a listing presentation, he has the same two obligations. Give the consumer the blue agency brochure and get a receipt from the seller. Remember, the goal here is to give the consumers the information in the brochure. Jack could use any form of receipt to satisfy the receipting requirement, including a separate receipt book. Most of the transactional forms in use also have a receipt boilerplated into them. These will satisfy the receipting requirements, but the consumer still has to receive the brochure. Kim is working on her appointment. Let's discuss your agency options while we have a minute or two. Well, we just sold our home in Texas, and we learned all about fiduciary duties. Isn't this really just the same thing? No. You come from a state requiring a common law fiduciary agency. Our laws are similar, but slightly different. Right now, you're a customer, and I'm what's called a non-agent. In Idaho, you are always a customer unless you sign a representation agreement for agency-level services. 
as my customer, I still owe you certain duties. I have to help you with your purchase. I have to act honestly, with good faith, and reasonable skill and care. I have to account for any monies you place with this brokerage. Regardless of agency status, I also have to tell you if I know something about the property that might influence your decision to buy or offer some lower amount. Idaho calls these adverse material facts. That sounds important. So what would these adverse facts be? Adverse facts are important. One example might be if the property sits in a 50-year floodplain. I would have to tell you that before you buy the property, but I'm not required to know everything possible about the property. Let's face it, I don't live there. If I do know something or learn something, I have to pass it along. That makes sense. Let's talk about what you get if you hire me as your agent. To do this, you would need to sign a buyer representation agreement. Then you become my client. As your agent, this brokerage is obligated to promote your best interests. In addition to the duties we've already discussed, we also have to perform any obligations in our written agreement. I have to help you with the negotiations. You don't have to follow my recommendations, but I have to give you the best suggestions I have. Remember, I said this is all about choices. As a part of helping you, I have to recommend consulting with experts if you have questions outside my field. What kind of experts? All kinds of experts exist out there. I've recommended pest control people, surveyors, even mold inspectors. People might ask questions that require an attorney or an accountant. It's nice to know that someone's looking out for us. Only if you hire an agent. Remember, it's all up to you. As your agent, I also have to look for other properties that might work for you. An agent also has to maintain your confidences. What sort of confidences? The information a seller might like to know during negotiations. You don't have to share any of this with me. But if you do, an agent has to keep it secret. Let's say you find a house you really like, but you want to try buying it below the asking price. As your agent, I can't tell the seller you're willing to pay full price. I have to do my best to get it at your offer price. Wow. And you wouldn't owe these duties to a customer? No. In fact, non-agents can pass along that kind of information to a seller because we aren't obligated to maintain your confidences. You're all set, Jack. You can head over anytime. Thank you. It looks like Jack's going to show property today without a buyer representation agreement in place. This is perfectly legal, and a representation agreement can still be put in place at a later date, if that's what the Harrisons want. Jack knows there's a certain amount of risk to this approach. He may never see the Harrisons again. Jack appears to be a confident person, though, Let's see how he approaches this. Okay, well that was a nice place, but I think I want to look at a couple more houses. Yeah, me too. Hey, say Jack, you said earlier that if we hire you as an agent, that every person here has an obligation to us. So what happens when you already have that obligation to a seller of the house that we fall in love with? Again, you have options. When my brokerage has the property listed, you can remain customers and we will continue to represent the seller as his agent. We would have to treat you honestly, but keep the seller's best interest at all times. If I'm your agent, you can give me permission to act as a limited dual agent. Then I represent all parties to the best of my ability, but I'm forbidden from sharing anyone's confidential data at all. I can't negotiate solely on your behalf, but I have to represent both of you equally. Hmm. I don't know, I'm really not feeling that one at all, Jack. You don't have to do anything you don't want to. The state of Idaho created these options to allow you to get the service that works best for you. Limited dual agency works pretty well, though. I still have to present any offer you make, and I'm not allowed to give the seller any insight 
to your bargaining process. We can think about that one. There's one more option here if you get interested in one of my brokerage's listings. You can also authorize us to do what is called assigned agency. How does that work, Jack? My broker has to remain a limited dual agent, but I don't. At your request, my broker can assign me to represent you and a different agent to represent the seller. In that case, I would be assigned to advocate fully on your side of the transaction. The listing agent would advocate fully for the seller. Well, does that work from a practical standpoint? It does. You have to take some extra precautions around here, like locking up our working files and making sure we don't engage in office chit-chat about your transactions. Under assigned agency, though, I can suggest what you offer or how to handle a counteroffer. Well, that sounds good to me. What do you think? Yeah, me too. Jack, I think we want to hire you as our agent. Great. Thank you. And what I'm going to do is I'm now going to show you the buyer representation agreement that we discussed earlier, and I want you to look over it very carefully. This brochure is published by the Idaho Real Estate Commission to let consumers know they have choices when it comes to representation. Jack did a good job informing the Harrisons and met all the legal requirements. In the end, Jack was perceived as knowledgeable, informative, and helpful. This process is all about choices. Informed consumers tend to make better choices and have smoother transactions. The Harrisons ultimately chose to hire Jack to represent them as their agent. Different consumers may find another option works best for them. The best licensees are familiar with all the various options and can explain them to consumers at the first substantial business contact. All right. All right, well, Kim's already got three homes set for you to look at in your preferred location. And uh, we'll meet here at 10, okay, on Saturday. Sure. So perfect. does that work for you? Yeah. Absolutely. Do you have any children? No, not yet. No. Nope. Don't we? Do we not? No. I can't, I, I can't remember. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> <laughs> the look you gave me, I was like, oh, we do. <laughs> it's actually pretty close to actually where you're going to be working. Oh, awesome. And, and I didn't ask you, do you have any kids? We do. We have two. We do? Two, two yeah. We, we have two kids. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Great. So, you have any kids? Because, you know, we can look at some schools in the area, too, while we're at it. Yeah, yeah. we're going to have yeah. to. Two sets of twins, uh, and we just adopted. Really? Yeah. Uh, uh, triplets. Triplets. Yeah. triplets. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> From Somalia. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure we don't engage in office chit chat a chit-chat about your transaction. Yeah. <laughs> and making sure we don't engage in office chit-chat. <laughs> 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 That's how you said it on our phone. Quotation. Oh, okay, the, the air? It's the, the what they call right. air quotes. Yeah. They, okay. They the quotation marks. I'm gonna do that. Sold. Air quotes. <laughs> well, at the end, script. when the rap, we'll all get up and we'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Said That's, a here. That's a wrap. There you go. <laughs> Gently tear off this piece of stuff right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the pretty one. I'll get the. I'll get the.